let's take a look at the raw develop filter. We'll start by using the adjust tab. In this case, the controls are pretty straightforward. One of the first things I try to do is get the white balance correct. Now, chances are your camera got this pretty close, so as shot is going to allow you to read what the white balance was that was determined by the camera. And this is pretty accurate. Now, if you need to make a change, one of the advantages here is you can easily adjust the temperature or the tint. If you need to, you can double click the slider and it will reset back to the value that was read in from as shot, which is nice. Now, we can also go ahead and make subtle changes here. And you see by rolling that to the left, I like the color of the clouds a bit better. So that seems to be a better white balance. You've also got the eyedropper tool here, so if needed, you can mouse over. And I like the nice touch of seeing the RGB values as I mouse over things. And I can click and it will read it in. Now, if this doesn't give you what you want by clicking, you can try different click points, or again, just adjust by eye until the white feels balanced. That's going to adjust both temperature and tint. Temperature is dealing with the blues and golds, and tint will help compensate for green or magenta cast. Next is exposure. Now, you can easily adjust this or type in a number here, and as you start to drag, you'll see the changes in exposure. Now, what's nice is you have five full stops of latitude in the raw file. Now, chances are things aren't going to be this overexposed, but I do find that the ability to recover is quite nice. I suggest you also turn on the clipping indicators here in the histogram so you can see what's happening. If you don't see the histogram, just click the button to open it. Now, this is looking pretty good, and as I increase contrast, you'll notice that the midtones are going to adjust and expand for more coverage, which is great. If I'd like to, I can recover more highlights, and you see that that brings those down. Now what I'm looking to do here is expand the dynamic range fully. So I tend to bring the whites up so it expands, but don't go so far that you see clipping. That red there is indicating places that are clipping. So I'm gonna back that off. That looks good, a nice bright white point. Lift the shadows a little bit so some of the areas that are a bit muddy are recovered, but bring the black points down. Now, if the black gets too crisp, you'll see it clip there, and that's what blue is for cold pixels. That looks pretty good. I see a little hot spot there, so I'm going to tone down the whites ever so slightly, and the clipping is gone. Now, it's okay to have a little bit of clipping, but you don't want to overdo it here. That looks pretty good. Now, the other thing to consider after you get the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks correct is clarity. Clarity is going to add some selective contrast to the midtones. Now, a lot of people overdo this and it tends to look really fake, but a little bit there in the water goes a long way to bring out details, which is nice. Now, that feels pretty good. I do have the ability here to use the overall slider on filters amount. So, if you feel like you've gone a little too far, you can just back that off and blend it, which is quite nice. Now, I would suggest as well that you consider adding another filter to this, and this is saturation and vibrance. After you get tone done, you might feel the need to add a little bit of vibrance to bring out some of the colors. Usually for me, I'll take saturation down and vibrance up, and that gives me a nice overall blend. Remember too, you do have separate controls over things, and you'll explore that you can actually mask the filter if you'd like to target its results to a more specific area. All right, that's the adjust sequence. You'll also find that if you're using Luminar for Mac, there's workspaces. And if you take a look at things like the professional workspace there, that's going to give you the ability there to use raw develop, denoise, plus saturation and vibrance, which is a nice combination. Let's go ahead and undo here for a moment and you see everything's restored. One other filter to consider is Accent AI, and this gives you the nice ability to just bring out some of the details, which is quite nice. Now, a lot of times, if that looks a little strong, just back off the filters amount, and it looks great. I can click the eyeball icon to see the before and after, 
and we've definitely unlocked quite a bit of detail. 